Hi, welcome back to my channel, I'm Michelle, and today I want to share with you my favorite holiday gluten-free recipes. If you're new here, I have a five-year-old daughter with celiac disease, so we are a gluten-free family of five. And the recipes I'm going to be sharing today are mainly side dishes and a couple desserts. So let's get started. I will insert the links for the recipes down below. I will tell you how I alter them a little bit because my son and I are also dairy sensitive, so we don't ingest anything with dairy. So our recipes are gluten-free and also dairy-free, and I'll show you how I kind of adjust those. But these are the recipes I use mainly for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I will insert a picture of the item I'm talking about because I'm not one of those YouTubers who's going to make an entire Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner because it's a video. I don't have that kind of time, so I will show you guys the pictures but and walk you through how I make the changes, but I'm not going to physically make the entire dinner for you. Sorry. So the first thing is, especially for Christmas or Thanksgiving, when you're talking Christmas or Thanksgiving, turkey, ham, whatever your family has, you want to make sure it's gluten-free. Especially with hams, usually the glaze that comes with the ham will have gluten in it. So if you're making this for someone with gluten sensitivity or family get together, whatever, just leave the glaze out. The ham itself will tell you if it's gluten-free or not. Same with the turkey, there'll be a little label that says gluten-free. Again, I have a video I'll link up above that talks about different food labels. It is pretty fairly easy to make your own ham glaze. Check out Pinterest. But first thing is the main meat or entree you're going to have, make sure it is gluten-free. So some of the side dishes I like to do. First is cranberry sauce. Now this is a recipe from Farmhouse on Boone. I really like it. I used it before we were gluten-free and I did not have to make any adjustments to it. I will usually double the recipe and make a double batch during Thanksgiving and then freeze half of it for Christmas so I don't have to remake it again. It's super, it's super simple and really delicious. So I highly recommend that. The only adjustment I make to this recipe is that it calls for the zest of an orange. I make sure that orange is organic because again, you're zesting the skin of it. So for me, I feel more comfortable knowing <laughs> that's organic than covered in pesticides. So the cranberry sauce, super easy to make. I highly recommend that. Or, you know, if you're one of those people, Jelly cranberry sauce is fine, just make sure it's gluten-free. Next would be green bean ca casserole. Now this is from the website Fed and Fit. She has wonderful gluten-free options. Most of my Thanksgiving menu actually comes from her website. I'll make sure to link it down below. She does have different versions you can make this. There's a non-dairy version. She also has a recipe to make the fried onions on top. I don't do that, this, this is one of my hacks. I buy the gluten-free fried, fried onions from Kroger and that, or no, Kroger does sell it, but I sell, get these from Aldi. But instead of making my own fried onions because that's a lot of extra time, I just buy these and put them at the end when I bake it. So that takes you all the way through the first six steps you don't have to do during the recipe. So what I do with that is I follow the version one and again, I just start in step six where you make the green beans. Frozen green beans are completely fine. I actually find those easier than the fresh green beans to cook for some reason. They turn out better. I've done both. Either works fine. And at the end, you just sprinkle these when you go to bake it. That's it. There's no dairy in it because it calls for almond milk. You can, of course, use regular milk if you don't have a dairy sensitivity. But that is my green bean casserole, and it's delicious. It has bacon, mushroom, onion, can't say enough about it. Next is cornbread pudding. Now I've taken the Jiffy recipe and I've just altered it to better fit our needs for being gluten-free and dairy-free. So Aldi again, I'll insert a picture, it sells gluten-free cornbread mix. And it's really good by itself, so you don't have to change it if you're fine just making it that way. I do like to add a little something to make it fancier, I guess, especially for holidays. So what I do is I t turn it into a cornbread pudding. And I will link the Jiffy recipe below I use. Again, instead of using that package of Jiffy, I will use the package of Aldi's cornbread, 
cornbread mix. The butter I use for the recipe is Earth Balance, soy free, dairy free. Also happens to be gluten free, vegan, all those things. So instead of using regular, regular butter, I will use this same exact amount. I will use a can of regular canned corn and a can of cream style corn. Again, make sure those are gluten free. So instead of sour cream for the recipe, I use the So Delicious Coconut Milk. It is gluten free, dairy free, all those good things. You can't tell the difference, honestly. This does have a bit of a coconut flavor to it, but while you bake it, you can't tell the difference, and it does really help the moisture, and then everything else in the recipe stays the same. And you might have to bake it a little longer since you are adding the different ingredients to it than is in the recipe, but again, just keep an eye on it. Toothpick comes out clean, it's done. Super easy, really delicious. It's always a huge hit at holiday get-togethers and people don't even know it's gluten-free. <laughs> so that's nice. Next one is stuffing. So this one, again, comes from Fed and Fit. Really love that website. Check it out for gluten-free recipes, also dairy-free recipes. Now, I will use, again, like I said, the gluten-free stuffing mix from Aldi, but I will doctor it up to make it a little bit fancier and a little bit more tasty. So what I do for this is... Again, I will use the box of gluten-free stuffing mix from Aldi. Italian sausage, small onion, celery, garlic, that all stays the same. The only difference I make is the butter. Obviously, I use dairy-free butter in it. But it's super simple to make. And then for ours, I also add in chopped uh, dates. My family, well, some of my family members don't like raisins, and some of them do, but we can all agree on dates. So I chop those up really small and put them in the stuffing as well, and it makes for a really delicious stuffing. Super easy, it definitely tastes homemade, and again, you're adding those other ingredients to really bring the recipe up. So again, check that out, super delicious. Can't recommend it enough. Next is a sweet potato casserole. Now this came in my Kroger magazine that I get every now and then. So I will <laughs> show you guys the recipe really quick if you want to screenshot it. But there we go. It's really good, really simple ingredients. Again, the butter, I use the dairy-free butter. I use it in a pie dish, so it kind of looks like that. Put marshmallows on top, toast it. Turns out really good. People really love it. And it's super simple. So try that recipe below. Again, I'll also write it down below if you would like that. And then for the so those are my main um app, or those are my main side dishes I make. I make cornbread pudding, green bean casserole, we have ham, we have cranberries, and that's pretty good. I mean, you can always add roasted vegetables, different simple things like that, but your menu, do what you want. That's the things I usually use that turn out really good every single time I use it. Next for some dessert items. Like I said, I do make my own pumpkin pie. The recipe is from Fed and Fit. I will link it down below. For pie crust, I do not make my own homemade gluten-free pie crust. I know it'd be super simple, but the few times I've attempted it, it's crumbled and just not been that great. So guess what? Convenience wins on this one. There are gluten-free pie crusts you can buy. Walmart carries some. They actually carry a graham cracker one that's also really good. My local Kroger carries them. Most grocery stores will have a gluten-free pie crust option. And most Walmarts, Target, things like that will have an option. Well, you don't necessarily have to go to a specialty store like um, Whole Foods or something like that. So I get a pre-made pie crust to start. And one change I make, the recipe calls for one cup heavy cream. Instead of heavy cream, I will use a can of coconut milk. I get my coconut milk from Costco. I think it's six bucks for the entire case of coconut milk, really good price. What you do is you put it in your fridge. I usually put it in the back of my fridge. And it says for at least 24 hours, I usually leave it for a day or two, because the longer it's in there, it gets thicker. The top of the coconut milk will become solid, like a cream that you can scoop out, and it'll be like heavy cream. So I suggest that. And again, it does not alter the flavor at all, because again, coconut milk, especially in a can, will have that coconut flavoring to it. But you can't tell, especially when you're putting it in baking and with different spices, it helps thicken it up. 
but it's a good alternative to having a dairy product. So coconut milk, really good. Again, you would just open the can, scrape off the solid amount, stick it in your pie. And then for whipped cream, I use, I use this Cocoa Whip So Delicious. It's dairy free, but it's also gluten free. It's this um, closest I've come to like that cool whip taste. Cause again, you can make your own cool whipped topping from coconut milk, but it's just not the same to me. I don't know, maybe growing up in the 90s, I have that taste buds where I like the Cool Whip. So I really like this. It's a good option. Again, they sell this um, Walmart, all those normal places, grocery stores, check it out. And if you're ever curious, you can always go to the manufacturer's website and type in your zip code and it'll tell you where their products are sold. For most products, you can do that. Another option is this Ready Whip. I prefer this more on like cocoa toppings, but or if you're having like a fruit pie, like a cherry pie or blueberry pie, to top it with this, this is pretty good. Again, it's gluten free, dairy free. It's a good option. So that is the pie. And one suggestion I make when you do the pie, lay something under the pie pan. So whether it be foil or a baking mat or put it on a large pan when you put it on there because the moisture from it will leak over and it will smoke out your oven. I've done it the last two years because I always forget to write down, make sure I put something under the pie pan so it doesn't smoke out my oven because that water will drip down and just make steam and just, it, it, it smokes everything. But the pie is really good and my family members can't tell it's gluten-free. So the last one I'm gonna share is Matzah, chocolate toffee matzah crack. I will start a picture here. This is delicious, super easy to make, super easy to make it gluten-free too. So there are three main ingredients. There's matzah, which if you didn't know, it's kind of like a giant saltine cracker. Butter, brown sugar, instead of brown sugar, I usually use coconut sugar, but it doesn't matter. Chocolate chips, pecans, and sea salts. Now they do sell gluten-free matzah. I actually found it clearanced at Walmart. And I thought, oh, well, I'll give this a shot because I have made my own matzah at home using gluten-free flour. But again, convenience is nice sometimes. It's really good with the recipe. You can also find it other places. I think Walmart only had it because it was after Rosh Hashanah, I believe. So uh, it's it's available it's good that's the base recipe again for the butter instead of using regular butter i use this and again it's the same ratio ratio you would use you don't have to make any adjustments instead of the brown sugar i use coconut sugar it doesn't matter brown sugar is fine i just like the taste of coconut sugar it's kind of more of a mapley taste it's I, I prefer this over it and then for chocolate chips what I use because again dairy sensitivity you can find gluten-free chocolate chips but it can be harder to find dairy free chocolate chips so this is what we use and again Walmart has these most grocery stores Target all those places have it and they are you can see gluten-free but they're also free of many allergies I'll show you real quick they're free of sorry about the crinkling they're free of a lot of things. So we use this as our chocolate base. And again, with your pecans, you just wanna make sure it's gluten-free because a lot of those things can be cross-contaminated if they're on the same line with something that contains wheat. So I will make that and what I will actually do is it makes a full pan of it. I will make half of them with pecans and half of them with not because my kids actually don't like the pecans on them. <laughs> so I will make that dish a little separate, but again, what I will do is I will, the, this can be made ahead of time, it can be frozen, it can be in the fridge, so it saves you that time later. I'll pack it up in a separate container and we'll just take it with us. A lot of this stuff can be put in a Pyrex container and taken with you to holiday parties, especially if you are bringing your own food. So those are my main recipes I use. Again. I really enjoy the Fed and Fit website for gluten-free recipes. They turn out really well. I haven't had an issue with any of the recipes I tried there. She does have like specific Thanksgiving menus you can access as well. But if you have any questions about any of the recipes, please let me know down below. I will insert the recipes because I know it can be difficult 
during the holiday season figuring out what to cook or what to bring places that are gluten-free. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.